This is part two of the HP 4194A video. So this time we're gonna look a little bit more deeply into the main unit. Ooh. <laughs> I took off the top metal cover here. This also says a little bit about what module goes where. I've added a little bit of numbers and uh, stuff here just to make my life easier because I've been poking around with this thing for a week now. I also got all the metal shields off all the different units here because I take them in and out and do some measurements and stuff. So it will be easier for us to go through them now. So this is the power supply, the switch mode power supply. It consists of three modules. Let me take them up. The three power supply modules, A1, A2 and A3 module. The one in the middle, the A2 module, is the switch mode, half bridge or the, the, the transistor driver half bridge with the transistor drive system and the regulator board or the PWM regulator chip and see this is what goes through this entire unit is the way that they are um, integrating um, SMD components it seems like they don't want SMD components on any main boards. They rather want them on uh, thick film boards or plug-in boards like this. So you really see no SMD components on any of the main boards. And this is a typical HP thing, high impedance uh, tracks or connections they're done in teflon like this and you also see it here for better isolation super low leak this is a really really good method and this module had this cover mounted on it with a warning about severe electrical shock really there's different electrical shocks. They're the ones that are severe. <laughs> and the thing is that they they wanted maybe to mount some screws here for a better uh, thermal of the switcher. But it turned uh, out that the, the four screws in the corner is uh, probably enough to hold down this aluminum plate because we can see that there was a per perfect um, connection to this uh, surface and the first module is of course the A1 module it consists of uh, input filter slow start <clears throat> this is a, a typical classic solution relay and a serious resistor and the relay will short circuit the resistor and this way we will charge the capacitors real slow so this is good for uh, low in rush and we should, of course, take good care of this. Riva, Riva, Riva. Ooh, it's starting to crack. <clears throat> you always see those cracked or smoked or burned or causing all sorts of problems. I really don't like them. But. So there's a lot of capacity here. So this is the DC high voltage main bus that goes straight to this module and then it is switched and this is the transformator section and you'll see something that i find a little bit interesting on this module look at that one a coax cable coming out 
of the inside of this transformator. How the heck? And look at that little optocoupler. Also see the tracks. So that is something I found really, really interesting. What are they doing? And the two thin wires like that connected together, probably some leakage shield or something like that. And this will, of course, be all the secondary. Got all the rectifiers, a high power, high current rectifier here. Oh, it is actually quite heavy. And here we got all the different voltages that it is generating. And those, of course, are all perfectly fine. A lot of rectifier diodes, smoothing inductors, and capacitors and all. So, let's see a little bit on the back side of this module. What are they? Those marks here. Well, this looks a little bit weird. And those tracks, I really can't figure out by looking at the different layouts or the different boards uh, in this unit if they used CAD or all sorts of uh, manual method to design those boards. Because you will see a lot of the tracks, they aren't parallel and angles are just any angle. And you see here is a little bit sloppy jobby, you know, the way the tracks go. See, the angles of anything is just any angle anywhere. Not that there's, there's anything wrong with that, of course not. I would just love to know if this is done in CAD or manual. Another thing you should maybe see as well, because they just love to do all the details. Super, super nice. So this is A1, A2 and A3, right? Look at the color codes. Zero, one, zero, two, zero, three. <laughs> and even See here, that all the plastic that it clicks into is also the right colors. Wow, they just pay attention for details. See, and it goes on and on. Six, seven, eight, nine, la 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 la. Oh, and then ten. Okay, one, zero, <laughs> and one, one. I mean, I just love this HP and all their cool, cool details. And also, so this is the room for all the digital stuff. See, that is a closed room. And then we got the, all the analog stuff it is again in its own room. And we also see this in the power supply. There's also a closed room. So they, they just know what they're doing. They really want to get super performance out of this. The A6 board is called Data Manipulation Processor. 68,000. And it's running at 10 megahertz. This is a 10 megahertz device. And here's a 20 megahertz crystal. So there's a clock divider somewhere. So all the program memory is EEPROMs. We've got some static RAM and it is battery backed up. This is not an original lithium cell but two nickel cadmium cells and I measured this voltage to be two and a half volt. So somebody repaired this
the PCB layout of this unit is really, really beautifully made. And I think this one is done using CAD. It is a four layer board. And also note the side metallization here. This connects to the metal in the case for good grounding and shielding. Let's look at the other side. Silk screen on the bottom side with all uh, park um, identifications. Made in Japan, yeah. This is really, really nicely made. Huh. Well, that battery repair is not so nicely made, but anyway, if it works, it works. Also, if you look a little bit on the PCB tracks, you'll see here. Some are 90 degrees and some are 45 degrees. I don't know exactly why they're doing this. It looks like some, some places I see a little bit of weird angles or weird tracks. And of course I, I see those things because I designed PCPs for a living, so it's quite funny to see 90 degrees and then 45 degrees and in a mix like this. And also the distance between tracks. Why would you put those so close when you got all this space? The A7 module is the graphics display controller and the RAM for all the graphics and there's also GPIB interface see this is a P8291A GPIB uh, talker listener device and we got a lot of RAM and all those chips they are line drivers so I believe this is like a dual port memory access so the memory control can do all the uh, lines and curves and circles and what is needed and uh, actually done in hardware. We've also got a lot of RAM here and we've got five more here. Really really funny and again tons of I.O. drivers. And again, this is also a four layer board with ground to chassis connections. Beautiful designed four layer board. And some of it looks a little bit like manual, especially when you see the tracks the, the many many different angles and methods done in the layout here and you see stuff like this all over see all those weird angles and then and look at that track why is it going this way and then out again so some something was maybe here or they tried to make space or something that they didn't use the space and then they forgot to clean it up or the layout was done manual and then you can't be bothered because then you need to remove track by track. It's really, really different. The A8 board is the measurement control processor board. And again, there is a 68K 
This is also running at 10 megahertz, by the way. This one, I'm not able to, to Google whatever that is. Those are timers. And then, then all the program memory. And it looks like all this EEPROM and RAM is configured for 8-bit operation. You see, all the data lines are just connected together like that. But this is a 16-bit data line processor, right? So that means that it's running on weight states and some hardware here that is interleaving the high-low, high-low side of all those. Otherwise, it's not possible to interface this processor, of course. And you can see how it's done here. All the data lines, they just go through like this, revealing 8-bit memory interface. This is also a 4-layer PCB. But this 4-layer PCB consists of rectangular or square VS all over the place. And again, the layout is a little bit weird at some places. Again, the angled and the 90 degrees and the the spacings and such is a little bit weird. Was it auto rooted and was it layout manually or how and why is it looking like that? But other than that, it's really beautiful. It looks like they put a lot of time and energy into all this. You can see the tracks on the next layer here. This is the A9 module. It's called the Phase Detector AD Converter. We got some really nice analog linear regulated power supplies. Obviously, you need clean supplies for AD conversion and such. You can take off the shields. I removed all the screws. So this is the two input and look how nice they did it with uh, again the low leakage And we see this all the time where we got SMD components. They're not on the main board, but they are on thick film circuits for some reason. And this is a two layer board. And again, we'll see the little bit weird layout with the different distances between the tracks and such. What have we got here on those? Almost nothing. Let's see the back side of this board. Oh, I forgot to remove the shields. This is pretty good. So this is, of course, a sense track. <laughs> and 
and then we're doing regulation and stuff. Don't you just love those free angles and everything is done for a reason. And we're still looking at the backside of a nine board. I took off the two bottom shields. So this is clearly something really important. The AV converters. That is of course very important stuff. And it's a beautiful two layer design. I think I already mentioned this, but please be very careful about all the thick film circuits. They are hard as glass, very, very thin and fragile. And if you touch them with almost anything, they can crack really, really easily. And then you have a broken device that is impossible to repair. Just be super careful, all right? A10 reference frequency generator. So here's a nice detail. They're trying to show how to mount the different shields, I guess. All right. So this is the 160 megahertz IF oscillator. The phase detector. All the dividers and stuff, and the reference oscillator. Sixty megahertz. And then there is a hundred and sixty megahertz VCXO. I bet that's in here. And then it's filtered and amplified. And it goes back to the mixer here. And I believe this is compared also with this 160 megahertz. But this is not exactly 160 megahertz because, see, I think they add these two frequencies or something like that. So that's a little bit special the way that it's done right there. And then it goes into the phase detector from the mixed signal and then back to all the dividers so this is a pretty big and complex frequency generator PLL circuit and all the capacitors that I've marked on this board they had leaked some of their inner as it's out so there was actually a little bit wet around most of those capacitors so that is of course not so good so they definitely need replacement and that will take quite a while This is the back side of this module. The back side of this board with these shields removed. So there will be all the dividers somebody changed the mixer right and didn't clean up yeah 
And here is a really funny track. They cut something under here. So this is the VCO part of the one of the crystal oscillators. And what do you see here? Those tiny blobs. See? I have seen them all over all the boards. This is not so good. And if you look again. See? But it looks like the boards there were cleaned really, really good. So why do we get those tiny little blobs? This is not so good. The A11 module is the fractional divider and counter. So the output of this module is 160 megahertz to 260 megahertz. And this is how it covers 100 megahertz uh, range because it is mixed down to zero in the measurement unit, of course. So let's uh, look a little bit into the different boxes. So this is the VCO. So yeah, okay, that will be the capacity or yeah, the capacity diodes. So that will be the oscillator, I guess, right? And a little amplifier. Some more amplifiers and stuff. Is that a custom chip or a programmable chip? And the same here, it looks, this looks a little bit like an EEPROM or another programmable chip, a custom chip of some sort. I can't uh, read the schematics because it's just super, super shitty quality. So I can't say a lot of intelligent about this uh, chip. <laughs> I see this all the time. Track, tracks that's not parallel. This is the bottom side of the fractional divider here. See, they mean a lot of business when it comes to shielding. And this is really, really nicely done. And see here, good chassis to ground connections close to the connectors. This is a very, very good idea. Of course, I want to put those connect uh, connections to chassis as close to the connectors as possible. This is how you minimize ground loops. The bottom side of the fractional PCB without any of the shields. Look at the PCB layout. A lot of the tracks, they go really, really funny. This, I must say, it looks a lot like a manual layout without any cat. Would you do this if you're using cat? And would you do all these Really funny angled tracks. I really like uh, the start point of uh, power supply. This is a good way to prevent cross chalks on power supplies from different circuits. <laughs> the, and the tracks aren't, aren't really parallel and angles are just Really funny and
here's another one. Why would you go all that way instead of just going? Huh. And see all those funny, funny angles of everything. Just super cool. Oh, this is how you do it. Of course, we got some low leakage leakage shields around inputs to op amp circuits. Tracks around here. Yeah. So it's better to go down there and then back. Clearly. This certain deep scratch mark here. Yeah, I, I just love those routings. Absolutely fantastic. Anyway, that was a walkthrough of all the different um, PCBs.